Hello and welcome back to Chasing Green Arrows. It's been a relatively quiet week due to the international break, but we're back. Uh, we decided to do a transfer special episode. I have with me as usual my co-host Abraziz. How are you doing? Good, good. How are you? I'm doing well, thank you. And uh, Mr. Zohar Khan uh, celebrating a Lakers win, uh, championship win. How are you doing, man? Man, I'm good. I'm good. You know, just uh, tired from all the celebrating, bro. You know, <laughs> being on LeBron's private jet, having the in LA, and then coming back just overnight for you guys. It's exhausting, but I do it for the team. I do it for the team. <laughs> we, we really appreciate that. Really appreciate that. Um, but yeah, I mean, um, no Premier League action for a while, but uh, uh, next uh, we're, we're getting close to that. But uh, uh, the deadline uh, deadline day was done. That was a very busy day, so I decided oh, let's let's talk about the transfers. Um, uh, Don, we'll start with Arsenal first. Uh, with Thomas Party just right at uh, the last minute uh, signs for Arsenal. Your thoughts on Arsenal's general uh, transfer market this season? So um, I think we did a pretty good job. I think we we um, got a few players that we really were looking looking into getting. Uh, most importantly, we were able to. Uh, uh, sign uh, Aubameyang to a long-term contract. I think that was very, very important. Uh, so that that really start started this transfer of uh, the 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 kind of uh, window off nicely for us. And then the likes of Villian that comes in uh, for 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 uh, f- as an experienced player who's who's been there, done it in, with Chelsea before. So that that's an added advantage. And then we had to uh, improve our defense. And Gabriel coming in and he's already played a couple of games where he's looking pretty solid. So that's very nice to see. And then yeah, just in the nick of time, party time that was very very important. And I think um, uh, give a huge boost, the, I think, to Arsenal fans. Absolutely, man. With 15 minutes left in the window, they just go out there and they just pay a release clause, uh, throw Atletico Madrid off the uh, off the grid. I mean, they just like completely surprised. There's a lot of news that Atletico, Atletico didn't like the fact that uh, we the way we approached it. But I was like, that's exactly what we're all about, you know. That's we, we you wanted to give us the release clause, we gave you the release clause, and I think uh, uh, we 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 really uh, strengthened where we needed to. I think that this is a good look Arsenal side. They they strengthened nicely. They uh, the, the, from the high of the FA Cup and everything, I was I was a little bit worried that they might not strengthen enough, but they've gotten three or four decent decent guys, uh, and most importantly, like I said, um, they were able to get a long term contract signed for uh, Aubameyang. That's very important. Danny Sabayo is coming back for another year of loan. That's also very very important. I think he's 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 also been pretty good for Arsenal. He's con- he continues to show that a, a little bit of extra in, in the creative side of things, and then with Pardey coming in, I think now. Oh, I think good things are going to come for us. And I'm very, very excited for this window. Yeah, they missed out on Aurar, but like apart from that, uh, it's probably a really good window for Arteta and his boys. Yeah, I think so. I think uh, I think with the way with the way the last day went, I think Aurar was kind of out of out of it by by like with a couple of days left. I think he went out and came out in the open and said that he's going to stay at Leon for another season, whatever. So I mean. It is what it is for him. He decided to stay good for him, whatever. But I think Partey, uh, uh, there's 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 a lot to be excited about this guy. He can he really runs the midfield, and um, if he can if he can add to uh, if he can bring in that kind of play that uh, he showed at at, at Atletico, I think uh, uh, if he can run that kind of midfield over here as well after he gets accustomed, so it might be take a little time for him to get accustomed to the Premier League and stuff like that. But if he can just come in and do what he does, man, I'm I'm. I'm very very excited. I mean, uh, with Adidas coaching and with um, with uh, the new new look players coming in and really settling down, I I am very excited for this season for sure. Yeah, top four looks like a bright chance now for Arsenal. Um, and the players sold. Uh, you're happy with that, and uh, that made room for the likes of Party to come. But you're happy with the players sold. So I, I think we did a decent job in sending getting a couple of guys out. I mean, uh, like and for loans example, as well. Yeah, yeah Torreira, Torreira for a loan a deal and and a couple other guys here and there. Guendouzi, uh, man, getting rid of Guendouzi yeah. for uh, on, on loan again. I think, but yeah. I think we uh, we still have a little bit of deadwood left. I think in terms of, I mean, with due respect to to the players, of course, there's there's a little bit in left in like uh, Socrates maybe who probably won't be able to even make the squad for us because we have to name only 18 or 19 national international star uh, stars and stuff like that. So there's there's a couple of things i was just trying to see uh there's there's um, there's uh, the contract expiration of of uh, mustafi and ozil that's kind of uh, on the on our head as well so that's kind of a couple of things that they could have done a little bit better maybe for sure but i think for the most part i think they would they did a decent job in trying to get some get some of the guys out as well so it's definitely i mean I, of course martinez going for a decent amount of money that kind of helps us uh and genduzi mikitarian went away so that's also um uh, one of the good signs. Uh, one of the good uh, guys. He was not going to play for us ever. So 
so it was nice to just get rid of him for whatever for whatever we had to get rid of off and then so a couple of things like that i think um a couple of things still to what work on in terms of cleaning out a little bit of the deadwood but i think we did a pretty good job in in the kind of time frame that we had in the limited funds that we had with we we did we worked well with it i thought yeah i think you summed it up really well our transfer market and so coming to you we'll be talking about manchester united um, where sancho man <laughs> uh man bro it's okay don't worry sancho's coming <laughs> but listen i wanted to ask donny a question before we moved on yeah. so you know obviously thomas partey fantastic player we've all seen what he can do for atletico strong runner you know has has a lot of steel and composure in the midfield very talented quality quality guy the valuation for partey wasn't all that different than what it was for war so my question to you is that was it worth it to basically miss out on or to get partey instead and if you guys were going to end up paying cuz it's not like you guys got partey at a bargain you paid full price for him yeah. so given the small difference between the you know the valuations would it have been better for you guys to end up with a player like or who would have you know what which player would have had a bigger impact on your midfield between the two if you had to pick one ideally you get both and that really puts you up there into you know turning your midfield into a world class midfield which then again which is going to have a spillover effect on the rest of the team but if you had to go between the two who would you prefer so i i have been maintaining that the fact that if we if we are not going to be able to integrate ozil into this team i think that or would have been a better because he he has that little bit more in the creative side of things that is kind of what we sometimes seem to lack but i think that the way partey has been running the midfield at atletico i think we saw uh, today as well in in the international friendly also he really seems to be running really running the midfield i think you it's it's uh, uh, he brings in that aspect of of really bringing the ball from the defense to the uh, attacking side of things as well so i think with that i think it gives a little bit more freedom for danny sabayos to maybe use that to go ahead and play the creative side it gives a little bit more to granit jaka also to kind of just you know move up a little bit if needed you know that kind of things so it, it, i think it'll open up a, a, a line of uh, opportunities for for the guys playing around him because he will be able to give you that real steel in the defensive side of things and also be able to run it up to the attack side i think i think he's a very very good buy but i think if if it was only limited to creative side of things i think or would have been a better opportunity but i think we can we have the likes of emil smith rowe who's who's going who's also slowly getting integrated into this team who can he who can provide that aspect i'm not saying by any stretch of the imagination anything close to or but he has that as he has that side of him as well and i don't know maybe maybe ardita has a trick up his sleeve to maybe integrate ozil in after after he sees some improvement apparently in the in the in the training ground and stuff like that so that'll be interesting to see how it goes but i think pade overall uh, wins it for me right now for sure I think it was really great honestly I think one of the best signings you guys did was probably getting Gabriel um yeah. you know just the window that you guys went about everything was there there, there was a structure to it you know there have been clearly identified needs and then you know first first pick second pick you know alternate just things set up in such a way that you would be able to get someone that's going to improve your team even if you don't get even if you don't get the first choice and I find that you know that the plan was set up well and it was executed well um and you really have you know there's there's a sort of uh you know there's a clear vision that's being followed and because of that i think that that's really going to help your transfer business so, you know sure you you might not be able to hit every single window yeah. in terms of getting the right players but at this way you know you're going to be able to build together the team that our tactics has the biggest chance for success yeah um, okay. yeah that, that 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 was something that stood out the most for me it was it, it was recruitment with a plan yeah absolutely Yeah and so uh, moving on to match narrated um couldn't sign Sancho they got Cavani uh, they still have Lingard there on the payroll they still have Pereira there on the payroll um you have your thoughts initially on this uh, transfer market for Manchester United I mean man this transfer market pretty much went as most of our transfer markets do I thought it was a very poor transfer market um if you think about it we were in in terms of identifying players that were first choices that are targets that we really wanted i don't think we were able to get anyone even someone like donny uh who is a great player quality quality addition to our team the only reason we were able to get him is because madrid couldn't pull the trigger they had a deal worked out he was ready to go and then because of the financial impact of covid they weren't able to go ahead and pull the trigger on that deal and we swooped in and got that deal so it's not even like we were the main guys the front runners for that option so that aside look at you know i i i like donny i think he's a wonderful player but in terms of more pressing needs in the squad 
I think some of those were neglected. Mm. And as a result, you know, sure, we, the board signed this one player that had name about him. He's obviously got talent. He's obviously a classy player. They signed this one guy, and then it sort of allowed them to sit back and relax. Now, I know that that's not what they're doing, whatever's happening behind the scenes. But whatever's happening behind the scenes clearly isn't working. So, you know, you have this whole saga throughout the entire window about Sancho. Will he, won't he, will he, won't we? Yeah. And, you know, at the end of the day, I understand that, you know, by, uh, sorry, not, not, not by endorsement set evaluation of 120 million. They're like, you need to meet this in order for you to take this player from it. You're going back with an offer of 80 plus 20 and add-ons, 90 plus 10 and add-ons. Like, listen. And the strange thing was the personal terms were agreed like the next, like the first day of the transfer that, market. That, that's it. The personal terms were agreed the next day of the transfer market. Everything was sort of like set in place. And then you just spent the whole time, you know, not, not, not to minimize the amounts of money we're talking about, but literally, you know, talking about pennies to the pound. That, oh, well, you know, how about we structure the deal like this? And how about we structure the deal like that? And I talked to you guys about how, you know, there are some, you know, behind the scenes limitations on United in terms of the financial restrictions set to, set, set on them by the way that the Glazers finance the, the takeover of the club. So, you know, just things like that. It's just, I feel that if you weren't going to get Sancho, you should at least have some backup targets. I've talked about Ismail Assar before as well from Watford. You know, is he on the same level as Sancho? Probably not. But at the same time, he's also someone that's available for 35 million odd pounds. Um, you know, he, he, he's going to come from Watford. So he's already had experience playing in the Premier League. It's just that, okay, you didn't get your first target. Have some sort of backup because now you're leaving the team unstrengthened in an area that needs strengthening. If you're buying players to just reinforce and create options, fair enough. You can take, you can take your time with it and make sure you're getting the right people. But if you're trying to you know, immediately strengthen your starting lineup, then you need to be bringing people in. And if you're not getting your primary targets, you need to have some sort of backup option. And we saw that across the board with United. We didn't get a central defender. That was one of the things that was clearly identified as being a need. We didn't get a central defender. So a left-footed center back, there were rumors of Mercado from Leipzig. There were rumors of other people. Nothing happened. In fact, the club came out and made a bold statement saying that we don't need uh, a center back. So it's like, all right, fair enough. Where is that? need going to be filled? Are we talking about Tuan Zebe? Are we going to have, uh, you know, Eric Bailly being fit enough for a sustained run? Is, the you know, is, is Maguire going to be able to put his summer trials and tribulations behind them? All those sorts of things. Same thing when it comes to up front. We needed a wide player, didn't necessarily get one. Did we really need a backup striker? It's great to have Cavani on paper is a wonderful signing. You know, I hope it works out in the same way that it did with Zlatan. But there's no guarantee that anything like that is going to happen. And it just, if, if the thing is, it's all about timing. If they signed Cavani at the beginning of the window, at the middle of the window, no one would have thought twice about it. Be like, oh, it's a good signing. Elite yeah. level striker, he's come into rotate, he's come in to give competition, mentorship experience. But when you're doing it on deadline day, it just seems like a desperate, desperate move that, oh, we can't get anyone. So let's go out and get this guy. So it looks, it looks like we've at least done something. You're basically just, you know, Fluffing up the numbers at the end of at the end of the window. Yeah, um, yeah, and uh, I think um, uh, if, if we came in addition to Sancho, it would have been a great signing, like you said, rotate the squ uh, squad and like you know with all the competitions going on. Uh, but like when you need like a, a specific position, you need to strengthen that first. And like you also mentioned, like I mean they got Telus at left back, which is a good option for Luke Shaw. But then your main problem at the back is your centre backs, and there's no replacement. That's it. So you know, left back was something that we had sort of thought that we could. You know, we, we, we could fill that need with a combination of Luke Shaw and Brandon Williams, which is what we've been doing last year. Now you have Alex Tellers, who's great. I, I, don't, I don't think he's a bad player, but again, not someone that was identified as a first choice for whatever reason. Same thing, no reinforcement on the right. Dalo left as well, so it's pretty much, are you going to play Brandon Williams off the right now as a backup to Juan Bisaka? I know he can play as a right back. He might actually be better suited to playing right back, but again, it's just it just... The, the, the decisions made speak, you know, they, they, they um, you know, they, they, they reek of just poor planning. And then same thing, you know, we got uh, Ahmad Diallo, young kid, lots of talent, lots of excitement, but that's someone for the future. That's someone that, you know, basically where we, like he's not even going to be able to come to England until January mm. all over the place. It was just, there were, there were other buys made that were young, young guys that are definitely earmarked for the future, but nothing to improve the current state of the squad. But in com when our squad in comparison to, how our rivals have strengthened seems to be lacking quite a bit. Um, you know, and is this, is this putting Solchar a bit like uh, like an under severe pressure, like trying to like, uh, I mean, 
like because uh, he's not getting backed like and we saw this with Mourinho and Van Gaal they didn't get back and those are like proper tactical managers if they didn't get back and Ole is not getting back it's going to be a big problem right absolutely i think Ole not getting back is a major major issue we've we we've done this consistently with all of our previous managers after Ferguson let's leave aside David Moyes you had people like Luis Van Gaal you had people like Jose Mourinho and these guys all delivered some level of success to United whether it was moving them up in the standings whether it was winning silverware you know regardless of whether it's a, it's a Carling Cup an FA Cup the Europa whatever it is these guys won things so you know you at least back your manager if your manager is asking for something try to back him up and i find that there's a huge disconnect between our board and what our manager wants and then again it always becomes the manager's problem the manager's always the easiest person to fire it's always the weakest link to remove and that's what's going to happen if the team doesn't perform well if if you know if, if we don't hit the targets that we want if we're not making the progress that we will it's obviously only that's going to that's going to get the sack it's not like the board's going to resign it's not that they're going to you know fire all the players from the team and then go out and build them from scratch it's going to be only who's going to be you know the, the guy with his head on the chopping block and unfortunately that's kind of just how it goes um yeah on, on top of just our incoming one second <clears throat> bless you yeah, thank you uh, on top of like the incomings the other issue was outgoings Mm. Yes, yeah. that's what I was going to ask you. Yes, Lingard Pereira. Well, Pereira left. Oh, yeah, Pereira left. I mean, yeah, but Lingard is still there. Lingard's there, Phil Jones is there, Marcus Jones. Romo is there. You know, Smalling they, left, but yeah. But Smalling left, but Smalling was playing around and Smalling was probably the best out of those guys, you know. So okay. it's just, so it's like it's like a question it's like all right, you know, like you have all these players that don't necessarily fit into your plans. These have been players that have bought under, you know, various management regimes, various, you know, thoughts in mind i guess if you want to put it lightly as to why they were brought in and not enough of them have left these guys are on big contracts as well so they're hard to get rid of so it's it's it just like the whole transfer window just really for us reeks of just poor planning and absolutely abysmal execution to put it uh, positively <laughs> yeah i mean a lot of united fans will agree with their sentiments for sure um don um, if you look at like uh, teams who had an amazing transfer market we talk about chelsea uh they uh, right now it's taking time for them to gel but high quality players some excellent signings uh, havertz werner uh, ziak um, they also got chilwell they've got uh, thiago silva they've uh, strengthened in every position possible so um do you think they had the best transfer market Chelsea I think they did they had a very 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 good transfer market no doubt about it they've gotten and gotten quality quality players and a couple of these guys were even signed even before the season had ended last season had ended so they knew well, what was up know, the likes of Ziyech the likes of uh, Havertz and, uh, and uh, uh, I... Werner these these guys were all signed before beforehand um so you know they they knew that these guys were even already practicing so they had mm. a decent time to kind of gel and and kind of coordinate within the within the squad they were able to talk to lampard and get this a little bit uh, different from what united like uh, zo was mentioning about how it was it was very poorly managed poorly poorly planned this was planned well it was it was executed well it was executed early so i think chelsea had a very very good transfer window for sure it's just taking them some time to get gel which i expected them to do but i think if if this team continues to uh, remain without being broken up i mean if 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 lampard given it a couple of years and if if chelsea has is able to keep all these guys for a couple of years i think chelsea will do pretty well in the coming seasons yeah so would you like to add anything on that i think donny had a very, had a couple of very good points i mean chelsea we all saw the big bucks being splashed you know havertz for 80 uh werner for i think it was something like 70 mendy came in you know a lot of quality a lot, lot of quality being brought in and it, it was definitely sort of like the dam being broken especially after they weren't able to sign any players uh the previous year they had that uh transfer ban because of irregularities and how they were dealing with youth players right so i think we all knew that this was going to happen that chelsea was going to go out and make a statement um so that transfer ban kind of helped as well like i guess like the, the exactly. they had that money in the bank despite the covid exactly. they, they had that money in the bank and if you think about it it gave frank that sort of credibility because he's like oh well he he's like oh he was able to perform with essentially kids right he was promoting players from the youth team Mason Mount Tammy Abraham all these guys right so making do with those sorts of players sort of allowed him to be rewarded with these big signings but with these big signings obviously you know the quote uncle ben from spiderman with great power comes great responsibility and i think that lampard might be overmatched over here because you're beginning to see that he isn't exactly the greatest manager This is a team that's taking time to gel. 
And I find that if he doesn't, like, you know, especially injecting this sort of quality into the squad, I feel that Chelsea is going to have very high expectations with how they're supposed to be doing this season. And if they don't hit those expectations, I mean, I think Lampard's in a hot seat as well. Lampard could get fired very easily if he has a, you know, poor run of games or ends up with, uh, you know, let's say at most a top four finish, no silverware. That's still going to make them consider that whether this guy is the right man for the job, just how they talk about United, that Pochettino's available. Pochettino's available for Chelsea as well. Mm. Yeah, that's a very valid point. But uh, he, they've, they've gone on and strengthened with in at a, a few places. Like they needed, they need, needed uh, attacking reinforcements. Reinforcements. They've gone in and gotten Werner and Ziek. They needed midfielders. They've gotten Havertz. They needed defense. They've gotten Chilwell, Thiago Silva. So they've gone out and done everything. They needed a goalkeeper. They got Mendy. They've just all all across the board. They have seven or eight quality players that they've signed, which is which is hats off to them. I mean, they did it. They did it well. Sure. They did it early. They did they did a good job. Now it's just for a matter sure. of. Uh, setting it, setting those plans in, into uh, executing them and and making those uh, uh, making those big bucks count and and get those uh, expectations uh, fulfilled. You know, in terms of making ta- challenging for the title, maybe getting a silverware, maybe a fake up, whatever, something else. At least you know, try and get that uh, move move in that direction. So good, good on them. Yeah, and uh, Liverpool, uh, so like um, uh, like champions, but there was an uh, issue there in, in in terms of the squad depth. But I think with Thiago Silva and Jota, they've uh, they've strengthened that for sure. Uh, and um, do you think they they had a reasonably successful uh, transfer market? They had a pretty successful transfer market, man. That they with the team that they had last year, they achieved great things. You know, obviously they won the Premier League at uh, you know without breaking a sweat. That that was down to a number of different reasons, but part of it was being that Liverpool squad was so much better than everyone else's. And I think the the the, the building blocks, the foundations of that squad are still great. So they didn't have this urgent need to go out and you know bring in these massive signings and make huge changes. It was all about incremental improvement for them. Yes. Incremental improvement and you know trimming the dead weight, you know, getting rid of those players that weren't going to factor into their plans anymore, that weren't part of, you know, Klopp's long-term vision. Get rid of those players, you know, help their financial situation, raise funds for incoming players. Like, you know, for, obviously we know that, you know, Thiago came in, amazing signing. I think he's a fantastic midfielder. I think he's probably one of the best midfielders on the planet. And for him to be able to come in for 25 million pounds, it's a steal. He's immediately going to improve their midfield. He come, he brings with him like championship winning experience. So I think I think that was a great great signing. Jota, obviously, great player for Wolves, gives them depth in the forward line, which is something that they were lacking a little bit. So just these things were smart signings, but then also getting rid of all those players that they contributed in their ways to Liverpool getting to where they are, but getting rid of them is 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 just as important. Getting rid of someone like Nathaniel Klein, getting rid of Lovren, Lalana, you know, all these guys, getting rid of Loris Carius. All these players that were sitting on their bench, taking money from them, get rid of them, clear up space. So it's just been a really good rebalancing of the squad and fine-tuning them to make sure that they continue to challenge in the positions they're in. The only transfer that I thought was a little bit weird was them getting rid of Brian Brewster to Sheffield because I thought that kid had class and I thought that they were that he might be someone that they hold on to uh, in order to bring him up and have him as a homegrown option going forward. Yeah, uh, definitely. And uh, Don, if we look at their challengers, uh, Manchester City assume challengers, but we don't know what's happening right now because some crazy results in the Premier League. But uh, uh, Pep is spending millions and millions on those defenders, man. But uh, they still lost uh, to the uh, to Jamie Vardy uh, to Jamie Vardy hat trick. So, um, your thoughts on City's transfer market? They, I mean, they spent, but like, is it worth it? I mean that's that's kind of been city style since they've been bought over by the uh, by the Dubai guys uh, from for the past 10 years they've never really had any issues in in terms of spending the big bucks they've always gone out there spent the big bucks got in the players uh, it's just a matter of um, i think for for city if they needed a five more players, they would have gotten. Five, they yeah. would have figured a way out to get five more players. That wouldn't have been a problem. I think with City, uh, yes, they got in Ake, they got in uh, Moreno, they got in uh, um, Ruben Diaz, they got in Ferran Torres. I mean, these they've got in decent players. Mm-hmm. But I think is the fact that uh, the uh, Pep Guardiola seems a little bit. Uh, uh, 
puzzled over there. I mean, I I I, I don't with no, with due respect. I mean, he's been an absolutely incredible manager. He continues to remain one of the best managers uh, that has ever uh, coach uh, coached uh, a team like City or for that matter in the Premier League. In in uh, he's done he's done great things at Barcelona. But I think there's there's issues in that backroom. So I think he needs support. I think um, with due respect, I'm not I'm not making this up completely out of, out of the whim. I just feel like since Arteta has left, there seems like there's that issue <laughs> in, their, in their backroom stuff. That's that's really I don't know if they fill that that spot. But it just looks like there's there's a couple of things that uh, uh, so he, he's expecting to happen and are not happening. Maybe Arteta was taking care of that stuff. But there's there's something that's going on. He probably needs a little bit more for for Liverpool for for City. There's never really been a problem of players. It's just been the kind of uh, backroom staff, the support staff that's that's always. Um, uh, won them the whatever that there is to be won. So I think that's where they probably and and they, and the good thing is that they don't have any uh, uh, transfer windows or transfer bans or anything of that sort. They can just go out if they if they identify a player that they can improve their backroom stuff. They can just go out and get him. So I think that's kind of where they might want to just maybe revisit that and and really look into that and see if they if that works out. Uh, but I think that's kind of where uh, City is. They've gotten some good players. They are. Uh, the assumed title challenges, like you said, but they need to quickly figure out figure out what what is what is going wrong. Otherwise, uh, th- the teams like Liverpool, City, uh, sorry, Liverpool and Chelsea will start running away with this. Everton, for that matter, you know. Uh, I'll, I'll tell you. I'll tell you what the problem with Pep is, man. Pep is basically a checkbook manager. He's a bald fraud, and <laughs> for all the money that he has available to him, all the money that was available in transfer funds. The only thing you can't transfer in is a new set of hair. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but Joe, um, on Don's point, I wanted to ask you. Um, uh, but you'd rather have that kind of problem that City's having. Uh, but, but like the actual transfer kind of system, a- any fan would love that. Like any other football fan, like an Arsenal fan, United fan, uh, Chelsea fan. The way they structure the transfer market business, like they have like a proper director of football and everything, they actually get it done. So uh, yes, they spend a lot of money. You can criticize that, and you should criticize that because other clubs do get criticized. They spend a lot of money and they don't perform. But right. they have a good strategy going into the transfer market, right? I think yeah, absolutely. They have a good transfer. They, they have a good transfer strategy market. But again, uh, market strategy soon. But again, part of that comes from the fact that it is it is potentially a bottomless pit of funding, right? They know that you know the, 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 this was the one team that was in the market for Messi. Re- realistically, in the market yes. for Messi, when there was that drama coming along with hey, 100%. you know what, yeah. this is what's going to happen. But also, I find that you know City for all their uh, you know, for all the reputation, for all their you know track record of being of bringing in some great players, they, they they've also brought in some duds, some garbage players, and 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 if you you know you don't you only need to look at their back line when you realize that they've spent so much money and the vast majority of their of of their purchases have been flops. So mm-hmm. now the latest flavor of the month is Ruben Diaz. Is he a great defender? He is. All these guys come in with great reputations. Nathan Ake, they spent forty million on Ruben Diaz. They spent sixty million on. You know, that's a hundred million right there. So yes, at the end of the day, you know, the transfer market is there for you to improve your team. But at the same time, it's just like, I, there, there's just something, you know, I feel like maybe Pep, you know, I, I don't know what it is, but it's just some sort of roadblock that these guys are encountering. I would have honestly made sure I would have gone out and bought a replacement for Aguero. Mm. That's, a, yes. that's a big thing because... Excellent point, yeah. Like, this is my opinion. And, and, and you know, I, I, I've, I've put this out there in the past about what I think about Gabriel Jesus. And I think that Gabriel Jesus should be scoring a lot more points in in, in a team like uh, not points, uh, scoring a lot more goals in a team like City than he actually is. And he, he used to be that sort of person that leads that front line the same way that Aguero does. And when he's not doing that, it immediately puts the pressure on the rest of the team, which is fine. They have people like Sterling and all these guys that score a lot of goals. But you know, I just find that the striker position needs to be occupied by someone that can play that role really well. And I, I don't think that City strengthened in that role when they should have. Yeah, I think there's some excellent points there. Um, yeah, and uh, Don, I'm coming to you <laughs> because now I'm going to talk about Tottenham Hotspur. Gareth Bale is back in Whitehall Lane, man. Um, I mean, the difference here now for Marino is he's getting back. Like, yes, yeah. um, there is criticism, the style of play, uh, they've lost games. Uh, but now with the 6-1 victory and getting back, I think is very important. Um, so they had a decent transfer market, don't you think? I think I think they had a pretty good transfer market. Honestly, they they were able to get uh, an absolutely incredible player in Bale. Is is he the same uh, same player that left them? Probably not. Uh, he's he's older. He's he's been on the bench for a while. He's probably a little rusty, uh, injured also for another month or so. Uh, so you know, I mean, uh, I, I'm definitely a very very good signing. But I think the signing of of for them is obviously uh, Regulin, who's 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 
really come out there and even in the game against um, uh as united looked very so- it looked like a solid player he he only become better so i think that's that's been an important they got um, that that guy hoiberg from from southampton he's also really lo- looked solid in their midfield so i think they've had a very decent transfer market and and marino is getting backed and i think if he gets backed he's usually a good uh, lad to the uh, to, to kind of good guy for for a couple of seasons i've always mentioned this marino is only a two or three season kind of guy he is uh, he's going to give you something in the in these next two three years ideally and then he's going to ruin everything and make it worse before he leaves so yeah. that's kind of going to be the issue but i think as of right now they've made some decent signings they they look like a, a force to reckon with in terms of uh, uh, that challenging for that top 6 slot yeah and so your thoughts on this because i think he's brought in to win trof- uh, trophies whatever trophy it is because tottenham has not won a trophy in ages that's uh, it so um he's there and now he's getting back like uh, at united yes he had players he did some signings but um in the second or third season he didn't get the players he wanted uh, do you think it's like uh, uh, like the third uh, season syndrome that don talked about will that be uh, a thing or right now do you think um uh, like he will be successful i think he is going to be successful because i think he's being backed properly i also think that mourinho himself has made small changes to the way that he operates obviously mourinho is going to be mourinho you know he, he he he's not a specialist in failure and like some coaches that were referred to you know yeah uh, you know don don talks about three seasons and out but you know in three seasons he takes you to heights that other managers never get to in 20 yeah, years yeah that's a fair point don you know, some, <laughs> some some people they get some people they get comfortable they, they they sit in their fourth place couch and they go like you know that's good we're building a new stadium <laughs> and once the new stadium is built we're going to be challenging for titles and you know they came and went people are no longer with us I'm telling uh, you man I, I I would you would you would you not take that consistency over being like the the mess that you are at right at right now I don't know just think about well, it Well I think we're still finishing above you regardless of what's going on We'll so, find out this season right we have, we have a we have a bet offline going so, on so, so we do have a bet going on and I think that I think that you're a champion of of of, of consistent mediocrity and uh I personally prefer the highs and lows that come with United because I don't have enough things ruining my life and I would like United to ruin my life more Wow. But but uh, so I just had a question about Mourinho getting back, mm-hmm. right? I just, mm-hmm. it just came to, uh, top of my head. He did get back in his first season at United. He got Pogba, he got Zlatan. Yes, in his third season he didn't get back. But uh, will he have it could be that he has the same problem in his third season. Levy doesn't back him in his third season. Absolutely, like you know, that can happen to any manager, right? Any manager mm-hmm. could come in, be back for two seasons, not be back for the third, whatever the case might be. And Levy is known to be a difficult negotiator. But that being said, he's also a smart guy. He's a very, very smart guy, and he's shown that in terms of what he's seeing in this Tottenham squad right now, he's ready to make that investment. He's ready to go ahead and pull the trigger. They made some great, some great signings, some very smart signings. Getting Bale on a loan was, I think, I, th- I think probably one of the smarter, uh, you know, moves that were made because you get a top tier player, even though, like Don said, he's not the same player that he was when he was tearing down Inter, you know, up and down. Uh, the pitch but at the same time he's a more mature more clinical more sort of complete player in the sense that he understands what his strengths are what his what his weaknesses are and he's going to play with them he's going he's definitely going to give them uh you know a net positive when he starts playing for them other players that they were able to get you know getting someone like Hoiberg to strengthen their midfield give them that steel uh you know getting uh, Rugulio to like you know really help them on the flanks getting Doherty these players these were all smart smart players and i think that if Mourinho is able to get Tottenham delivering some sort of results. I think Levy is the sort of guy that will see that okay, you know what? This team is a work in progress. We made a lot of progress heading in the right direction and it wouldn't make sense to sink the ship just as we're about to pull into the harbor. Mhm some good points there and uh, I think just to wrap it up uh, two teams I just wanted to talk about I think uh, they uh, they have the excellent transfer market excellent start to the Premier League uh, uh, Everton and Leeds uh, Don if you want to talk about these two teams uh, Everton like James Rodriguez what a signing has been like people are talking about uh, will he adapt to the Premier League how long how long will it take but he's uh, banging goals he's uh, giving assists um, some really good signings there even Leeds are really good signings and they uh, they played well so your initial thoughts on these two teams yeah absolutely both of them have had they've have gone out there they mean business they uh leads leads to an extent really wants to make that top the top eight top 10 kind of uh, uh probably that um, you know they're really coming out this is their first season back after after a long time so they and and they have a absolutely incredible manager in Bisla who's who's going to um make their lives hard if they if they act funny so it's going to be fun to see that as as well they've gotten some good guys leads has gotten some very good guys in in Rodrigo in um, 
uh, who are some of the other guys. Um, they've got uh, Rafinha, Rodrigo. They've got um, um, Hela Costa. Some of some really good, uh, decent yeah. players, and um, and a very good manager to back that that that, that system. Uh, the only worry that I have with Leeds is the way that they go about their business. They shouldn't be burnt out towards the end of the season because of the amount of like every single player says the games are actually easier than the, tra- the than the training is. Yeah. So that that could that could affect it because when you come into the Premier League, you play uh, you play a lot more games. It's it's a lot more challenging. And then you have um, you have the uh, FA Cup, you have the uh, Carabao Cup, and stuff like that. So you you tend to play a little bit more. I just don't want them to be burnt out because they've had an incredible start to the season. I just want them to. Continue continue doing that continue to excite us and continue to give us good football to play with and um uh, I, I, sorry continue to give us good football to watch you know so it'll be fun to see them i'm very excited for them in this season uh a good a good team to watch as a neutral you know just we've seen them win 4-3 uh, against fulham lose 4-3 against a, 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 a strong yeah. liverpool side yeah. so it's, it's it's a it's a fun team to watch and i'm looking forward to them this season and then everton man i mean uh, don carlo he's he's an absolute legend of the of the game he's been he's coached some of the very very fascinating teams in the past uh, be it ac milan be it uh, the some of the other teams that he's he's done he's done an incredible job he he napoli was was probably his his big challenge that he wanted to take but then a lot of uh, uh, issues in their in their board uh, kind of made him uh, get sacked and stuff it's unfortunate that but but i think he he's the kind of guy he wants to uh, go out on a high and so i think he took a it was an interesting choice for him to choose someone like an everton who's a mid table team to really kind of um, uh, take that cha- take up that challenge and really you know take it take them to the next level in in terms of how they have been performing and really just uh, you know retire um, on a very high which is which is awesome to see and he's 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 doing what he needs to do he's he took a season to kind of settle in and everything last season they were not they were not really title contenders i mean sorry they were not really top four contenders this season they've come out they've gotten a couple of good players in ramos rodriguez of course calvert lewin is banging in goals they've got dakure uh, so some really good signings over there for them as well um, and they look like a very very strong team i mean and uh, and, and uh, i wouldn't be surprised if they finish top 4 i wouldn't be surprised if uh, if uh, they they go on and really you know maybe win maybe win an fa cup maybe win um, uh, i don't know if they're in the carabao anymore but maybe win something like that to keep their uh, keep their hopes alive i mean everton uh, their 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 uh, mercy side uh, 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 challengers are they in liverpool have have really uh, gone on gone on to take the next step in their uh, uh, uh by winning the premier league and everything they've gone on and done a pretty decent job so these guys were kind of lagging behind but i think with uh, don carlo coming in and trying of course they're still not at the uh, at the level that liverpool is there, but at least you know they're in there about trying to compete trying to uh, make that top 4 will be good for them yeah some uh, it's an excellent start especially for everton um zo anything to add to that I mean nothing to add is more riffing on what uh, Donny was saying over here honestly I think Everton has had probably the best market uh, out of the Premier League they went and they really all their signings fit into a cohesive system they're, they they were all team based signings they got mm. you know they got the flashy star they got Hamis Rodriguez but even Hamis is a risk because we saw for the past couple of seasons he was struggling to break into that Madrid team he wasn't really doing anything of note when he was at loan at Bayern so to go out and you know not not really flash this cash because cash because he came in on a free but at the same time take a risk on a player like that that sort of player that you know can have you know the 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 impression of being a diva whatever the case might be they get demotivated they don't play well but i think it was an inspired signing to take that risk to be able to say that hey you know what come to everton you're going to face a challenge but i'm going to be able to get the best out of you especially given the past relationship between uh, carlo and thomas and then you know the other signings that they made i thought were fantastic getting getting the people that 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 you need to complement someone like Hamis when you get a Dukure when you get an Allen someone that's going to be constantly moving the ball winning the ball bringing the ball up giving you steel in midfield giving you a spine and then you know you see the you see the, the sort of effects of that translate into other areas of the pitch you have Calvin uh, Calvert Lewin playing you know out of his mind he he's scoring goals for fun when he went from someone that was pretty much a laughing stock this mm. you know he he was being mentioned in the same breath as the Danny Welbecks of the world you know that guys that had great potential um you know didn't live up to it loved loved by their supporters and and clubs but just unfortunately never lived up to it you know mm. but now he's got he's a completely changed player on in the back line they've made smart signings over there they got Ben Godfrey as well from Norwich so just things that are really helping 
that team out across the board, helping them out in every position. There's a vision in place, there's a strategy, there's a plan. And I think that the way Everton have functioned in this market, Everton have traditionally been a bunch of losers when it comes to the transfer market. They are usually getting people's leftovers, you know, making signings that they can as opposed to signings that they want. And I thought this was a real statement of intent. I really love their market. And I'm, I'm I, you know, from a neutral perspective, as neutral as, as I can get, I, I'd love for Everton to do things in the Premier League, especially beat Liverpool. Um, but then ideally also leave a spot for United in the top four. These are just my, my small requests. <laughs> yeah, I think some fantastic points. You guys covered all, uh, like, all the bases, like uh, some really good points here. Just to end the show, I just want uh, two word answers. Your be- uh, best, which team had the best transfer market? Which club had the worst transfer market? Don, start first. Um, I think best, like uh, like Zoe mentioned, I think Everton uh, had had a very good uh, transfer market. Um, uh, I think Arsenal had a very good transfer market. There were, anyone who had the, that kind of structure, they had a good, very decent transfer market. They had a plan in place. And uh, Zoe mentioned these points. I, I think um, uh, a couple of these guys, I think Leeds also for, for that matter. Uh, uh, Liverpool in terms of just uh, uh, really adding to the depth that they needed to and, and they brought in very good quality. But if you have to just ask me one and if yes. you know that if you're going to be, I just have to be I have to say Arsenal had a very good transfer market. Um, I'm surprised you didn't mention Chelsea. We'll be, we'll be, we'll be, we'll, I mean, Chelsea also, so I, yeah. I, I apologize. Chelsea also <laughs> great, great transfer yeah. market. Uh, it, it's hard for me to pick one of these. Uh, I think in, in their own way, they've all had a very decent transfer market. Um, I think if you just have to pick, and if I have to pick, and if you don't allow me to yes. pick Arsenal, which I feel like you're not going <laughs> no, to. No, 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 you can, you can. It's your opinion. <laughs> so but I, it, like, personally, if you think they had the best no, pressure market. No, I think realistically, I think, uh, 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 I think someone like a... Uh, 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 and Everton only because Chelsea also they've had very very good players but I just think that it's going to take some time to gel into that and and Ever- Everton splash much out, more money yeah. yeah Everton went out and did some smart buys like uh, like uh, Zoe mentioned some steel they bought in they bought in some creativity some steel some defensive uh, backups and they've made Calvert Lewin look like a world beater so it's it's always helpful you know so that's kind of uh, I, I I just uh, stick my head out and and say Everton. Yeah, Everton, and your worst. Yeah. I know, I know who it is, but yeah, your worst. So, worst. so I would, I would have said, I would have said United because I think the only reason I'm saying United is because of the fact that they lacked an absolute like. I, I mean, uh, Zo brought up all the points that were needed to be brought up over there. There was, uh, there was lack of vision. There was lack of uh, really that inten- uh, intensity to just go out there and get what you need and stuff like that. You were trying, were trying and playing around with, and in the end, you ended up. Uh, kind of with with leftovers, what with is, and not not really the kind of guys you would really want it per se, but I think uh, uh, just to keep you guys happy, I'd say someone like a Burnley who hardly had anything <laughs> going on. That's probably the worst. Yeah, so <laughs> you guys were yeah. probably a close second. <laughs> so, uh, so in the bottom five, maybe. Yeah, yeah, for sure, I agree with that. And so you're. Uh, the club which had the best transfer market and the club which had the worst transfer market, in your opinion? In my opinion, I think Manchester United had the best transfer market of all time, not just this season. I think that these were inspired by as people are writing off Cavani. You're going to see this guy's <laughs> taking a year off. He's rejuvenated. He's been doing ballet. His footwork, you're going to see him, <laughs> you're going to see him skipping around defenders. You guys laugh at me, but you're going to see he's going to pull off moves that have never been pulled off. When The only reason that we didn't bring him in now is so that other teams have a chance chance to at least stake a claim because once he comes in it's over we're going to win everything but it's going to be an undefeated second half of the season we're going to win the premier league we're going to win the champions league win the fa cup and we'll leave the carabao for one of you second rate teams <laughs> <laughs> you get me yeah that's my, that's my honest opinion um but no seriously uh in terms of best markets on paper one team these, i'm going to give you i'm, I'm going I'm to tell you why one team if you just want to one one team it's everton Okay. If you want one team, it's Everton because of on paper they sign great players and they've been able to integrate them and hit the ground running. But in terms of sheer talent, I think that mm-hmm. Chelsea, Chelsea has signed some fantastic players, and we yeah. also cannot write off what Tottenham has done. Tottenham's still a work in progress. Obviously, Bale isn't playing, so it makes a difference when all those players are playing together. But I think right now, just based on current day and everything that's happening, the new players that have come in, how quickly they've adapted and the impact they've had on their squad. I think that Everton has had the best window, um, and in Fair terms enough. of worst, in terms of worst window, obviously I'm going to say United because <laughs> I think that you know they 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 really they, they you know they really dropped the ball mm. 
they did not, uh, you know, pull down their pants when they were going to the bathroom, and as a result, they need new pants. Uh, yeah. it's, it's just, it's just been, it's just been a complete mess. We sign players. There's numbers coming in, but are those the numbers that we need? There's not enough going out. It's just, it's just, it's just a situation that reeks of desperation, reeks of panic, and you know, like Donnie said, it doesn't have that vision. And then if we're gonna pick another club just for the sake of it, I think that Fulham. Uh, Fulham also had a bad window, not because of the number of people that they brought in. They had a fair number of signings. I just find that Fulham always goes out, buys an entire new team, and then they get promptly relegated. So I think that their transfer market business is also very suspect. Yeah, I think some really good points. United, I think also the fact that the, all the other top six, uh, uh, they strengthened, I think uh, that'll hurt United fans as well a bit more. But like, uh, I think some excellent points there. Um, yes, Don, were you going to say something? No, 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 I just, I, I kind of agree with, with uh, what Fulham, what he, uh, what Zoe mentioned about Fulham, they usually do that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah that's a good, yeah, that's a really good point. But I think some excellent points there. We discussed like uh, most of the top six. It was a, a lot of fun. I think uh, some excellent points. Uh, can't wait for the Premier League to be back and I'll catch you guys soon. Yep. Sounds good, man. Take it easy. Take care, Take care man. <laughs>